you are speaking and then you can put those back on, but uh, it's too hard to hear with the masks on. Dr. Jarrett, can you um, unmute your audio and check it one more time? I think somebody's, something's changed on this end. Can you un unmute the, the audio on your screen? Can you hear me now? Yep, that was it. Thank you. Can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us. We're going to turn over the time to Jill Vickery from the Utah Hospital Association, which is hosting today's Zoom call and press conference. Jill? Hi, my name is Greg Bell. <clears throat> Pardon me. My name is Greg Bell. I'm the president and CEO of the Utah Hospital Association, and we welcome you all here today. We have assembled experts um, from our four hospital systems in the state of Utah, and we welcome the media and other friends to our occasion today. Thanks to all for your contribution in uh, organizing this event, and thanks to the media for attending. Everyone will be muted except for our designated presenters. And uh, for the media, kindly use the chat function you'll see at the bottom to submit questions and uh, we'll follow up on your Q&A at the end of uh, the presentations. The reason we're here today is because of the very disturbing uptick in COVID positive cases in the state of Utah. Since May 28th, we've had a steady incline in cases averaging more around 400 cases per day. Uh, which is far above what we saw in previous weeks and months. We even uh, exceeded the 600 mark. And uh, while you have to look at the smoothed average, uh, the trend is definitely up and uh, it it's, uh, shows no sign of abating. And today we want to present to you what uh, Utah's healthcare systems and professionals recommend so that we can, as a state, come together and do all we possibly can as a citizenry to um, interrupt this uh, vicious, vicious uh, increase on this pandemic. We um, want to introduce our hashtag of uh, Mask Up Utah, and we'll uh, share that with you. Joe, would you like me to do that now, or are we, we're doing the graphics later? Okay. Uh, so let me introduce our clinical leaders and thanks to you and also our infectious disease and emergency medicine uh, experts who will answer questions and make presentations that will uh, indicate to you what's going on. Uh, first of all, from Mountain Star Healthcare, we have uh, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Michael Bauman and his associate Dr. Jeremy Voros, uh, emergency medicine physician. So uh, let's uh, turn the time to Mountain Star, Dr. Bauman. So Greg, thank you very much. And thank you to the uh, Utah Hospital Association for organizing this event today. Uh, we're very appreciative of that and for my other colleagues from the other health systems joining today. I wanna to make sure that those who are listening today really understand the serious nature of what we're here about today. Greg mentioned that to you. Uh, around the increase in COVID. Uh, I have insight into 21 other states and 40 other markets. And unfortunately, Utah is a lot like our other markets. We're seeing an increase in this issue around COVID. And it's multifactorial, at least in Utah. In part, it's due to the uh, decreasing uh, social distancing that we should be following. It's the events around the Memorial Day holiday uh, any number of things are causing this. And what we're here to talk about today are basics. What are the basics that we should be following? You're probably tired of hearing this, but it's you know social distancing, six feet away from one another. It's remaining home as much as possible to enable that social distancing. Hand hygiene, one of those really basics that uh, we all should have learned as a kid. 
And today what we're really focusing on is masking. And masking is a key initiative, but all of these together are important for all of us to prevent the spread of this potential problem even worse than it's occurring today in Utah. And it's particularly important for, are the, are for those that are actually at higher risk, those that are older and have multiple medical problems, for example. Unfortunately, I fall into that group right now, and luckily Jeremy over here has got his mask on for me. So today let's focus on masking and clarifying. What is masking about? Masking is not about you. Masking is about everybody around you. This is to prevent the spread of potential COVID from you to someone else. That's the key to remember. Also, I wanna touch on something. As a clinician, I've been a pulmonary critical care doc for more than 30 years. This is a healthcare issue. This should not be a political issue. Masking is about basic healthcare and preventing the spread of disease to your family, friends, and even people you don't know. Now, one of the problems that we run into with the data around masking, and I took some time yesterday reviewing that, and uh, what I found is it's got a lot of if, ands, or buts. We don't necessarily have all the data we need around masking, but this is really a common sense issue. Now, in medicine, we always like something called a randomized controlled trial. That's the gold standard. So let me give you an example. In the British Medical Journal, in 2003, there was a great article, and it was all about, I want you to listen closely, do we need to do a study about wearing parachutes when we jump out of airplanes? This is called common sense, guys. We need to be doing what we need with masking to prevent spread. We would like more data, but what we don't have is the time to wait for that data. This is very common sense. We need to be doing it now, again, for the protection of others around us. So I'd end with mask up, do the right thing, and help us flatten the curve again and reduce the issue of COVID, not here, not only here in Utah, but around the nation. So mask up, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> we have Dr. Arlen Jarrett, Chief Medical Officer of Steward Healthcare. Dr. Bauman, or Dr. Jarrett, you're muted somehow. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so, I'm, thanks, Greg. I'm pleased to represent the Steward Healthcare System in Utah, our five hospitals, as well as health centers and clinics and offices. And as you know, we're part of a, a larger national system from which we have learned a great deal. Um, our hospitals in Massachusetts have been through um, a, the pandemic crisis already uh, once, and, uh, and as they're settling down and finding to uh, starting to gain some calmness in their in their hospitals, uh, uh, we have concerns that uh, in Utah that we might be ramping up and heading possibly to the same place where they have been. Um, I, I'm pleased to report that right now the Stewart hospitals uh, are at only at 50 percent capacity so we we have plenty of space right now uh, over the last few months we've had an opportunity to build up our our um, supply chains and we have strong supply chains and um, and we've uh, honed our infection control practices which were already strong and robust uh, but based on things that we've learned in uh, Massachusetts and elsewhere uh, we have really strong infection control practices that uh, that um, we're uh, that we have in operation and as Dr. Bauman said, one of the key principles to our in-hospital infection control practices has been the universal masking, where everyone wears a face mask. We've done an excellent job inside our hospitals at preventing the spread of COVID. Um, it's very, uh, it's extremely rare for people to, uh, to actually catch COVID inside the hospital. Uh, and a big, a big portion of this is because of the PPE we wear and the masking that goes on. Uh, there are there are a few studies starting to surface. There was one uh, preliminary report out of the University of Iowa last week that, that looked at um, uh, all the different states in, in, in the United States and compared in, um, spread rate versus uh, those states that actually had a uh, universal masking protocol or, uh, or recommendation or guidance. And there's a, a very strong correlation between those who are masking and and have lower rates versus those who aren't masking and have rates that are getting out of control. Um, since the beginning, beginning of the pandemic, uh, um, 
at Seward, we've had a steady uh, influx of COVID patients to our hospitals, especially those in the west side of Salt Lake County. And we've had we've had a lot of awesome experience, a lot, op, a lot of awesome people, uh, patients and their families. We've had uh, just amazing experiences. We've seen amazing recoveries, uh, and we've wept with those uh, few sad losses. But fortunately, we've had, we've just seen mostly most of our people get better and leave. Uh, go back to their families. We've our staff, our doctors, our nurses, and others have spent a great deal of energy uh, building these relationships and in these relationships. It takes a, a great toll on on uh, healthcare providers to to uh, be in these experiences. But but I will also say that our healthcare providers have gained great strength. The type of strength that people gain from the love that uh, one feels when they provide meaningful service to others. And that's what charges our batteries. That's what keeps us going. And uh, but we know we have a lot of work to do a, a, a ahead of us. We we are concerned. Stewart is concerned about the trending upwards. Uh, ever since Memorial Day, we've seen our hospitalization rate go up. Our case rate has grown up. We're now ninth in the nation, where we we were boasting a very low case rate before. Uh, now we're ninth in the nation. Uh, we were seventh yesterday. The good news is from uh, this these data is that. Um, for whatever variety of reasons in Utah, our, the people who die from the COVID disease is actually a pretty low rate. In fact, we are the lowest state or region. We're number 51 in the, in the country for a death rate uh, right around 1% or less. Um, this will, we'll be studying this to uh, figure out you know, what are all the factors that go into this. I'm sure our younger, healthier population has something to do with this, but I also like to think that the excellent health care that, that our citizens get when they come to our hospitals uh, has a lot to do with this or something to do with it at least. Uh, we know though uh, um, that uh, we, we, can't, uh, we can't keep going the direction we're going. We've got to do something and Stewart fully supports the, the measures, this Mask Up Utah uh, um, um, kick, uh, program. And uh, I just I just want to mention one more thing from our data, and then and then I'll send it back to you, Greg. But um, as as I look at the data, the state data, uh, just during the past week or two, uh, it's clear that 60% of cases um, were spread through the household. Um, that, that means 60% of people who catch COVID disease catch it at home. Now, how does it get into the home? Uh, well, uh, we find that about the other 40% is coming mostly from social contacts and other contacts, a little bit of uh, work contacts, but not so much as you'd think. It's, a, it's mostly from social and other contacts. And, and we know that, um, that we've got to do something out there uh, while we're in, in society to protect our families. Uh, we've shown that we could do this once before with some very drastic lockdown measures, but we're, I feel quite certain that we can do this, and I'm optimistic that we can do this without those lockdown measures if we will all just take uh, our responsibility and, uh, and practice those things that are being preached here uh, today and over and over again about um, making sure that we social distance and that we use good hand washing and sanitizing, and that when we can't social distance, that we wear a mask. Um, at Stewart, we're encouraging our employees and our staff to set examples as healthcare workers by wearing their mask and practicing social distancing and good hand hygiene while they're out in public. We feel that this can carry a lot of weight when people watch them as healthcare workers. Um, they might uh, they might also be inspired. And, and I'll just end on saying that really um, there are a lot of reasons we can think of to uh, wear a mask. But it boils down to this, we're protecting our own families. We're protecting the, the, the people that live inside of our home. And it's as simple as that. Back to you, Greg. Thank you, Dr. Jarrett. <clears throat> we'll now go to uh, Dr. Mark Breesacher, Chief Physician Executive of Vendor Mountain Healthcare. And he's joined at the table with uh, Dr. Eddie Stenium. Welcome, go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Greg. And uh, it's really great to be here today. I'm. Uh, proud that Intermountain is joining with the other health systems in Utah to, to talk about this really important topic. Um, why, why is this so important? You know, this is, this is about all of us. This is about our patients. It's about our caregivers. Uh, and it's about our communities. And we're at this really important moment in time. Uh, we had a tremendous response at the beginning. And in many ways, we were setting the bar across the nation 
with how, how we responded, how we came together, uh, how we quickly developed uh, the necessary protective equipment to um, be ready for the, whatever came next, and how we prepared for any and all scenarios going forward. We then were able to begin to open up, and that's been really good as well, and, it's, and that's meant a lot to people. In order to, to sustain this, uh, I, you know, I think that the, uh, we have to take the steps that we've talked about here. Um, this is about caring for each other and do, taking that individual step to say, I am, I'm doing this for you. Uh, from, from a perspective of uh, maybe other things we do like this, uh, every day we get into our cars and we, we put on our seat belts um, and we, we drive through and we, we follow guidelines and rules and regulations and we're, we're, we're thoughtful for, uh, in that way because that helps keep you safe and it help keeps, keeps me safe and keeps my family safe. And so in, in many ways, I think this, this mask is just, is just another seatbelt that we, that we need to put on every day. Now, Another example of our great response in the community has been the support we've gotten to make homemade masks. And so this is the mask I wear a lot. Um, it's, it's kind of gray and business-like, but I also like to have fun. And my friends uh, gave us this great mask that has uh, some tractors on it. And as a pediatrician, of course, I really like this one, which is uh, to have a lot of fun with, with, with the polka dots. And so, um, there's a mask for every moment, and this is our time really to wear that mask in every moment. I also want to talk, when, in speaking about leadership, I really appreciated the leadership from our state epidemiologist, Dr. Angela Dunn, and the Utah Department of Health. Um, the way that they have worked with all of us to coordinate, uh, the partnership that, that they uh, have demonstrated and that thought leadership and expertise that they have brought to this conversation and, and guidance is really important. And we're thankful to have that, that type of uh, partnership with Dr. Dunn and with the Department of Health. Uh, and I'll just come back to, to this idea that we, we can and must continue to lead out on this important topic. Masking up, Mask Up Utah is a, a simple yet extraordinarily important idea. It is that, that seatbelt that we all have an opportunity to put on every day. We do it for ourselves, our friends, our family. Uh, for us, it's for our patients and healthcare workers. Uh, and that's the type of simple step that can make a real difference. Now, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about the steady increase in hospital admissions and I, I, intensive care unit admissions that we have seen. Uh, we, like uh, uh, the other health systems, have prepared, we're ready for this, and we need your help. And so uh, I really appreciate the time today, Greg. Uh, again, I want to thank my colleagues because I think our collective voices are, are, can and will make a difference here. And uh, back to you. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Let's go now to the University of Utah. Dr. Michael Good, Chief Executive Officer of the University of Utah Health. and um, Dean of the University of Utah Medical School. He's joined by his colleague, Dr. Jean-Marie Meyer, from whom uh, we'll hear later. Thank you, Dr. Good. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Michael Good, CEO of the University of Utah Health. Coronavirus is turning out to be an extremely tough virus. Coronavirus can move fairly easily from my mouth and nose to your mouth and nose. It only takes a cough or a sneeze, and from there, it moves to your throat. For many, coronavirus infection is a mild condition, a sore throat, a cough. It might be no symptoms at all. But for some, coronavirus makes, it way, makes its way from the throat into the lungs, and once in the lungs, coronavirus can cause an extreme infection and some individuals leading to severe pneumonias and, and even death. Right now, coronavirus is moving too fast in our Utah communities. It's a tough virus and it is very fast. 
We need to slow it down and we need to slow it down now. We need to stop giving one another coronavirus infections. So today, I join my colleagues in asking you to hit the brakes on COVID. I'm asking you to do this by wearing a face mask whenever you're outside of the home. Whenever you're outside of your home, wear a face mask and stay distant from others. That's how we hit the brakes on COVID. Face coverings and distance are our best weapons to fight coronavirus. You know, most of the decisions we make in life, good or bad, they prim primarily affect our own lives. If we choose to smoke cigarettes, we run the risk of developing cancer in our own lungs. We choose the behavior and we individually bear the consequence. But with coronavirus, for most of us, when we make decisions about our own individual behavior, we're making decisions that are primarily gonna affect others. If we make poor decisions, we will hurt others. If we do not wear face coverings, we will hurt others by potentially sharing and infecting them with coronavirus. So again, today, I'm asking you, let's hit the brakes on COVID. Please wear a face covering, not just for yourself, but to make sure you are not spreading the virus to others, to make sure you do not infect your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, your close friends, your colleagues. Wear a face covering because you care about others. Wear a face covering because you're worried about your own health. Wear a face covering so you can keep your job or get back to work sooner. Wear a face covering so we can all enjoy as many normal activities in life as possible. With coronavirus, the life you save with a face covering and distance may not be your own, but will be the life of a family member, a friend, or a colleague at work. Thank you for helping us hit the brakes on COVID with face coverings and distance. We can do this. Let's mask up. Utah. Thank you, Dr. Good. For our final presenter, uh, we've invited Dr. Eddie Stenium, a specialist in infectious disease. He's going to tell us the clinical benefits of wearing a mask, how we can protect others, and why it's important to stem the uh, spread of COVID. Doctor. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Thanks for having us. And it's really great to see all the healthcare leaders coming together in collaborating on uh, really just one of the hardest healthcare crises we've had um, in recent past. Um, we are seeing a disturbing and, and quite frankly an alarming trend in an increase in COVID cases. Really since May 27th, we've seen increases in cases throughout the state. This isn't isolated to a single outbreak. We are seeing increases throughout the entire state of Utah. In addition, our testing has plateaued. And so this is not a phenomenon from an increase in amount of testing. This is true increase in community-based transmission. In addition, um, across Intermountain Healthcare and across all of our healthcare networks, we're seeing increases in hospitalizations due to COVID-19. Within Intermountain Healthcare, compared to a month ago, we have doubled our uh, COVID-19 cases in our hospitals. We currently have the capacity right now to care for these patients and offer them advanced therapeutics. But if we continue this trend and we do not abate the crisis that is going on now, um, we will reach capacity in the coming weeks and we will no longer be able to care appropriately for patients with COVID-19 and also those um, that seek care for other reasons. In addition, uh, the Utah Department of Health reported that the number of close contacts that each COVID-19 case has has increased from five to 20 uh, as of recently. That is really an indication that we as a community are no longer following uh, social isolation. We're moving around the community. Our cases of COVID-19 now have certainly more contact with other people, which makes contact tracing hard and more laborious. In order to prevent uh, a significant healthcare crisis, uh, we must course correct now. And we have to be um, aggressive with this and we need to be bold with this. 
Um, everyone now has a role to play um, to protect themselves, uh, their families, and their communities um, from COVID-19. Um, three steps that we need to focus on. The first is why we're here today. We need to mask up. Um, we know that a significant proportion of the transmission of COVID-19 occurs from people that are asymptomatic um, or minimally symptomatic. These people will be out in the community, engaged in grocery stores and other social areas. Um, these people are inadvertently transmitting the virus. When we put a face covering on, we reduce the amount of infectious particles that are leaving our mouths, our nose, and reaching those others, infecting those others, causing those others to get sick, and in some cases die. By putting on a face covering, we are protecting other people. We're protecting us um, in terms of preventing infections in our communities and our families. This is an imperative. If you have to leave the house and you are in public, we need everybody to wear a mask to really stem the tide of this uh, epidemic. In addition, we can't forget the basic principles of um, preventing COVID-19. We must maintain social distancing. We must reduce the number of close contacts that we have in our day-to-day -day activity. We need to really reduce the amount of time that we spend out of our homes. Um, and if we do have to spend time out of our homes at work, um, at grocery stores, that we need to mask up. And the last thing that we really need to focus on and continue to focus on is hand hygiene and preventing touching our face, nose, and eyes um, in order to prevent that transmission to ourselves. The, the time is now. If we are going to course correct and prevent a healthcare catastrophe from getting worse, to prevent us reaching our max capacity, we have to be bold right now. And that includes having everyone mask up across the state of Utah. Back to you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. We'd uh, like to show you the um, graphics that you're going to see. So um, this woman is going to wear her mask in Mask Up Utah. I do it for my mom. This woman will do it for her kids. And this young man will do it for his friends. This, um, these visuals you will see um, throughout the state of Utah on billboards. You'll see them on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. You'll see them um, on landing pages and in digital media. You'll hear them on radio, uh, in ads and talk shows, and you'll probably, we hope, run into them as your employer tries to pass the message and will enlist you uh, to pass the message to your friends on your social media platforms, to your family, so that we can multiply the influence of uh, the people who have been won over to this. This has to be a non-governmental initiative. When government gets involved, it gets political. This is not a political issue. We can do this as a community. If we want to keep our economy open, we need to do this for someone. And I choose to do this for my family. I mask up for my family. Dr. Good. Thanks, Greg. I'm gonna mask up for all those who help me at the grocery store and the hardware store and other retail establishments uh, when I'm, I'm in their stores. I mask up for them. Dr. Boris. Like Dr. Good, I mask up for all those other essential workers who, like our hospital staff, have to go to work, who are serving our community, who need to be there um, to make sure things run smoothly. I mask up for the essential workers in our community. Dr. Jarrett. I'll mask up to keep my family safe. Dr. Breesacker. I mask up for family, friends, and for all the caregivers at Intermountain. We'll be there for you. Thank you. We would now like to uh, entertain questions from uh, the media. Uh, Alex Cabrero. says, uh, wearing a face mask shouldn't be political. Do you feel wearing one should be made? 
made mandatory by political leaders with some type of penalty for those who don't? Why don't we ask uh, Dr. Jarrett that question? <laughs> well, I'm not, I wouldn't be in favor of, uh, of penalties, I don't think. I, I think I'd like to think that we can do this on our own, as has been suggested, without uh, uh, this being mandatory. Uh, I, I would save uh, any sort of government mandate as, uh, as the last ditch effort to protect us from ourselves. Thank you. Uh, David Boy asks, I've heard a lot of people say I can't wear a face mask due to a medical condition. Are there common conditions that prohibit wearing a face mask in public, Dr. Brizakwa? You know, there are some respiratory conditions that uh, certainly uh, could come into play. Um, I think that most people who have these types of conditions are, are very high risk to begin with. And so uh, I, I hope and trust that they are taking steps to uh, stay safe, protect themselves and their friends and families around them are doing so as well. Uh, you know, I think that the, you know, for those, wearing a mask is something that takes a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, it can be a bit uncomfortable and uh, feel a bit constricting. And uh, my ask of everyone would be to, to wear the mask, stick with it, and you will find over time that you, you, you do accommodate and your body adjusts to, to wearing it. So uh, a few conditions, rare conditions at best, and for most, absolutely for the overwhelming majority of us, we can do this together. Okay, thank you. We have a question from uh, Carter Williams. Um, and this will be for one of our infectious disease specialists. Uh, what message would you give to people who say they don't make a difference? What are the numbers behind how much masks reduce the spread? I don't know if Dr. Uh, uh, Jean Marie Williams would take that or Dr. Stenham. Dr. Williams, would you take that? Um, I, I can take that. So I think we all can make a difference in terms of um, wearing our mask or face covering. Um, studies have shown that we can significantly reduce the transmission um, to other individuals. So we can each all do our part. And I think has been mentioned before that since COVID-19 can be spread or individuals can be infectious without um, our knowing it, um, we could have mild symptoms or be asymptomatic or start shedding high amounts of virus before we know. It's most critical that all of us wear a mask when we're around other individuals. Anyone uh, else like to address that one? I, I agree with Dr. Dr. Mayer. I think something that can really highlight the utility of wearing masks was a, a report in the media that came out a number of weeks ago where there was two infected hairstylists, and they worked at um, a hairstyle salon that required masking of both the individual people working that were infected and all of their customers. There was over 150 people exposed to those two people that were infectious, and zero have gotten COVID-19. So it really just shows how beneficial a mask can be when worn in social environments like that. We're gonna see more and more um, examples of this come out in the media. Um, as our medical liter literature catches up with all this. And so it's absolutely clear that wearing a mask is preventative um, and will definitely save lives. Thank you. I called you Thank Dr. You. Williams. I apologize, Dr. Mayor. We also have with us today, Dr. Michelle Matau, infectious disease physician and Spanish speaking subject matter expert, and Dr. Uh, Carlos Gomez, uh, infection disease specialist at the University of Utah and we'll try to direct some questions their way. Um, Paul Nielsen says, what are some of the reasons people resist wearing masks and how would you debunk those reasons? Um, I wonder if uh, Dr. Gomez, are you there? Hey, Greg, we're gonna do the Spanish speaking portion of the press conference after the Q&A. Okay. All right, great. Uh, well, then let's direct that. Uh, I'll, I'll um, pronounce your name correctly this time. Dr. Uh, Meyer, why don't you uh, address that? What would, how would you debunk reasons people give for not wearing masks? Um, 
you, you know, it, it's hard for me to know all the reasons that people um, prefer not to wear a mask. Um, I think some of it was the um, uh, people brought up sort of earlier that um, it might be uncomfortable or um, people may feel constricted. That again, that um, just practice wearing the mask um, can be helpful. I think um, there may have been mixed messages earlier in um, the, the COVID pandemic where there were mixed messages coming out from different organizations. Um, some of that was due to a surge on masks and supply and the concern that um, those healthcare workers would um, to conserve the supplies for healthcare workers. Um, we've learned a lot about COVID and transmission, and I think a lot of information has come out about asymptomatic transmission and transmission when people are pre-symptomatic. So it's become more evident that it's really important for everyone to wear a mask and to just continue reinforcing that. Thank you. Um, Dr. Voros, uh, there's a question here of saying, why is this political and how can we make it not political? I, I can't answer why it's political. Uh, as a physician, it's pretty straightforward. The data show that wearing a mask reduces the spread. People come into the emergency room and are understandably nervous about potentially getting COVID while at the hospital and they're happy to wear a mask at that time. And I would say that being out in the community is a similar situation. Um, so I, I think it's common sense as Dr. Bauman mentioned in his statement and others have said today, uh, it's about protecting yourself and your community and that politics doesn't seem to play into it from where I sit in the emergency department. Thank you. Dr. Brizacher, perhaps you could answer uh, if COVID cases are increasing, why are we still seeing about a 40% available capacity in our ICU beds and, and our other uh, hospital beds? So the answer to that, Greg, and it's a great question is, and I, I think I, we would just maybe point to the facts, the, we have increased in our, the number of ICU beds that are used every day, the number of ventilators that are used every day. Um, while the increase in uh, hospital utilization hasn't been as fast as the increase in total positive cases in the community, those positive cases are the leading edge of what then follows several weeks later. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were all uh, responding to the outbreak in places of work uh, at the meat, like for example, at the meatpacking plant up in Logan. And we know that that was just the first step with workers getting COVID-19, then family and friends uh, contracting the, the disease, and then that leading to broader community spread. And sooner or later, that spread gets to a high-risk patient. And that's, those are then the patients that end up in hospitals and end up in our intensive care units. And some of them, very sadly, end up passing away from it. And that's, that's why we're all here today. Uh, it, it really is that collective thing that we can do together, this, this very straightforward step of washing hands, keeping that distance, wearing a mask. And, uh, and, and so if we don't act now, uh, to, to the point that Dr. Good made, Dr. Stenya made, and everyone on the panel made, we will then be in a place where there is increasing pressure on these hospital beds, and that's not what we want. And I know as a community, we can do this. Okay, Melissa Anderson asks, I notice everyone's wearing a different type of face mask. How effective are the various masks, and how many feet do you have to be away from someone when you're wearing a mask? Very good question. Let's go to, um, uh, let's see, Dr. Good, why don't you take that one? Thank you. Um, I always go back to the principles, uh, which I tried to uh, illustrate or describe earlier. Remember the virus spreads in respiratory secretions. And so anything that can slow down or separate two people so that 
respiratory secretions from an individual with coronavirus do not make it onto the hands or the mouth or the nose of another individual, and hence that second person becomes infected, help us slow down the virus. The, uh, turns out most of us, when we cough or sneeze, uh, we expel respiratory secretions for approximately three feet. It turns out the Olympic sneezers and the Olympic cough, uh, coughers uh, can sometimes have respiratory secretions approaching six feet. And so we set that distancing, that physical distancing recommendation at six feet, hopefully to keep us, uh, we believe, to keep us apart so that when we're near someone who sneezes or coughs, and as Dr. Mayer said, may not realize they have coronavirus and coronavirus in their respiratory secretions. If we stay apart, those respiratory secretions cannot move from one to another. If we add a mask, we slow down the respiratory secretions. Um, the question about different, size, uh, different types of masks, different types of face coverings, all of them slow down uh, respiratory secretions. I don't know, I've been wearing my mask for several weeks. Uh, I've got a little bit of seasonal allergy and I had a pretty good sneeze the other day. And I can tell you, most of the respiratory secretions uh, landed in the mask, not in the environment around me. That's what we're trying to do. So any face covering is better than no face covering. In the hospital setting, uh, where we have COVID patients, we use medical grade masks. Like Dr. Breesacker, uh, I think the Project Protect and uh, the many thousands of volunteers who, as part of the uh, Project Protect, made 5 million masks for our community um, out of medical grade materials. So any uh, mask is better, any face covering is better than no face covering. Medical grade masks are better than um, um, you know, a non-medical grade masks. But I think if we get everybody in a, in a face covering, uh, we will start to see the progress that we need in slowing down this virus. Uh, Dr. Voros, address uh, children wearing masks. We're, we're trying to send our children back to school and students college. Uh, what, what about younger people and children wearing masks? Some parents cite CO2 buildup and dangers. I've seen that on my social media feeds as well. People expressing some concern about that. I, medical professionals, especially surgeons who sometimes do six, eight, 12 hour surgical cases have been wearing masks for extended periods of time without any trouble. So I, I'm not sure where that rumor started or what people are concerned about there, but there, you know, we, we have more than decades of experience showing that it's safe to wear a mask for a very extended period of time. As far as children wearing a mask, I, you know, their, their risk is similar to adults in terms of contracting the disease. Their illness severity seems to be lower um, but a child can spread it. In fact, a child is probably a more efficient spreader of coronavirus than an adult would be if they had the illness. Um, so, but I, I, you know, part of the reason I think that wearing a mask is difficult for people to wrap their head around is because one individual's chance of contracting coronavirus is fairly low. The mask is meant to reduce that risk further. If you're talking about a population, then you start to add those risks together. So if you can get an entire schoolroom of children to wear a mask, you've collectively reduced the overall risk of coronavirus being spread among that group and taken to those, those children's homes, you've suppressed that risk significantly. So it's, it's about this cumulative effect. I think that you know whether or not children are gonna be required to wear a mask is sort of beyond my call as an emergency physician, but it certainly seems like a tool that we have available to us to help reduce the spread, to help return to more normal activities, and to flatten the curve and decrease the case count. So I, I think it's vital, important, uh, and certainly something that we should be considering for adults and children. Thank you, doctor. Let's close with two final questions. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bree Socker, First, and then finally, Dr. Jarrett. Dr. Jarrett will ask you to address 
what precautions we should take as we approach the 4th of July so that we don't have a uh, similar spread as we saw in, on Memorial Day. Dr. Breesacher, the question is about when will overwhelm ICU capacity? Uh, we seem to have uh, good capacity today, but given the growth of the, uh, the infection spread, uh, what, what's being modeled? So based on our current growth in hospital cases and ICU admissions, our models are showing that in the next four to six weeks, we will be approaching our peak conventional capacity. As I mentioned previously, we have planned for additional contingencies uh, and that, uh, that and so we're ready to do that. Uh, but we, we don't want to, we want to manage this uh, across our healthcare systems within the conventional beds and ICU beds that have been uh, staffed with experienced nurses and experienced respiratory therapists and experienced physicians. So uh, we're ready for whatever comes. Uh, and that being said, we must take these steps. We must work together, each of us making that choice to wear the mask. Uh, mask up Utah is definitely uh, a very important thing for all of us to be strongly considering today. Thank you. Dr. Jarrett, let's have you close out. Sure, your question about being safe on the 4th of July. Well, first of all, don't burn yourself. Don't burn others and don't burn down any buildings. That's the, that's the big, my first big advice. But uh, um, in terms of uh, the subject at hand, um, wearing the mask is, is clearly the key thing for us all to do when we, get, when, we, when we can't keep more than six feet away from each other. Um, we need to be wearing a mask so that we don't spread this disease. Um, we've, there's been a lot said about different types of masks. Um, sure, some masks may be better than others at, uh, at preventing spread, but, uh, but they're all good. Um, medical masks uh, do something uh, <clears throat> different, uh, especially the high-grade medical masks that the uh, clinicians wear when they're taking care of COVID patients. Uh, those masks are designed to prevent uh, uh, viral particles from coming in. Most masks that the public are going to be wearing are doing less to prevent viral particles from coming in, though they do some of that. They're, they're mostly preventing us from spreading uh, viral particles outwardly. Um, there's a, a bend, there is somewhat of a trend sometimes for people to wear a mask maybe part way. Uh, maybe they wear it across their mouth but not across their nose. And, and while this may be better than no mask at all, it still is, is way less than, than optimal because um, uh, so uh, and we, we have uh, actual scientific studies and slow motion studies showing what kinds of uh, particles come out of out of our nose and our mask when we're our nose and our mouth when we're wearing masks and and uh, and a significant amount will be coming out of our face if we're if we're not wearing the mask properly and I'll just end with uh, with just uh, some data people have been asking for data to show that masks help uh, I know that uh, sometimes it feels like it might be an infringement upon our freedom if we feel like people are telling us we must do this, uh, especially if we don't want to. Um, but um, here's, here's some data out of uh, the University of Iowa uh, study uh, I mentioned referenced earlier. They, they looked at all of the states in, in the United States uh, and looked at their, their rate of spread up until May 22nd. And they, and they compared the states as to whether or not they had um, uh, universal masking programs in the state or not. And, uh, and if, they, if, every, if every state without a universal masking program had behaved like the states that did have universal masking programs, uh, they calculate that uh, up to May 22nd in the United States, we would have seen 450,000 fewer cases of COVID transmission because the states where people are wearing masks have less spread of COVID disease. That's a fact. Uh, we're starting to get evidence to support that fact. Uh, and, and my plea, along with everyone else on this panel, is that we all should do our part to protect ourselves and our family and others around us. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, thanks to all our participants. It's been a wonderful time together, and uh, we trust the media will, uh, will find us as newsworthy. We, we think it's uh, something very, very important. Um, hospitals are doing this of their own initiative. I should mention that our local, I'm rather our rural facilities are joining in this campaign as well and uh, will be contributing. And so this is a statewide campaign of Utah's hospitals. 
we'll time, turn the time now uh, over to our uh, Spanish uh, physicians and, and experts. Uh, again, Dr. Michelle Macau, infectious disease physician, Spanish speaking subject matter expert, and Dr. Carlos Gomez, infectious disease specialist at the University of Utah Health. Thanks to all our participants and to the media. Hey, just a note on our Spanish speaking media, we will be sitting Dr. Carlos Gomez and Dr. Michelle Mathau now to answer your questions in Spanish. Also want to let uh, all the uh, participants know that this campaign will be carried out in both English and Spanish. So it'll appear in Spanish speaking publications, Spanish speaking media, and uh, in Spanish speaking billboards as well as English uh, content as well. So let's go ahead and get our participants set and, uh, and we'll start out. Dr. Gomez, are you with us? Dr. Carlos Gomez, are you with us and ready to start? Just taking a moment to see if we might be in our Dr. Gomez, can you uh, can you hear us now? Okay, we'll try it again. Dr. Gomez, can you hear us? We're not hearing you, so we're still working to get that fixed. And Dr. Gomez, on your end, if you can make sure you're unmuted on your computer. That may be the, the issue. You still have him muted. Yeah. Do you want to unmute him? Okay. So Dr. Gomez, if you can unmute on your end, I think that's what uh, we need to have you do. Came from my no, meeting. So should I unmute here? No. no, we're good now. Okay. Okay, Dr. Gomez, we can now see you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you for joining us. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Dr. Gomez, why don't you go ahead and uh, start with an overview of this campaign and why it's so important to our communities. Correct, and I do this in English or in Spanish? In Spanish. In Spanish. Es muy importante esta campaña que estamos tomando en el día de hoy para todos los televidentes latinos eh, de corregir el curso donde estamos viendo con las tasas de coronavirus y ponernos la máscara por nuestras familias, por nosotros mismos. Hemos visto el aumento del número de casos de coronavirus. Hemos visto que podemos llegar a un punto de saturación del sistema de salud en nuestro estado y es importante prevenir la diseminación de la infección usando la máscara cuando salimos de nuestras casas, es la mejor manera de proteger a nuestros familiares, a los seres queridos, a nosotros mismos, y la mejor manera de mantener las actividades regulares, pero con las precauciones pertinentes. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. Now we have Dr. Michelle Mateo, who is an infectious disease physician with Intermountain Healthcare. Dr. Mateo, can you share some of your thoughts and your perspective on uh, this campaign and the broader issue of wearing masks during the COVID-19 pandemic? Sí, claro. Gracias por tenerme aquí el día de hoy participando en esta campaña para nuestros eh, hablantes hispanos. 
uh, es muy, muy importante el uso de las mascarillas, como el doctor Gómez lo ha mencionado, el número de casos aumentando es muy alarmante y creo que, que lo que tenemos que tener es un sentido de responsabilidad social, tenemos que tener un sentido comunitario. Eh, no solo se trata de protegernos a nosotros mismos, sino de usar las mascarillas para proteger a todos los que están alrededor nuestro y a nuestras familias, amigos cercanos, pero también al resto de nuestra comunidad. Eso es tal vez el mensaje más importante que yo quisiera dar el día de hoy. Dr. Gómez, can you talk about the protection that masks offer to those uh, who are wearing them and to the people around them? Correcto. Sí, uh, para nuestros hablantes y televidentes hispanos, eh, es importante la protección que ofrece la mascarilla. Primero, hemos visto que la gran mayoría de personas infectadas por coronavirus pueden estar mínimamente asintomáticos o, o pueden estar no tan sintomáticos, digámoslo así. Entonces, no van a sentir un cuadro clínico relevante, pero manteniendo el uso del tapabocas, la diseminación, la propagación de las secreciones respiratorias, ¿cierto? Cuando estornudamos, cuando tosemos, esa diseminación eh, es, se expande sin el uso del tapabocas. Con el uso del tapabocas bloqueamos esas secreciones respiratorias y es la clave para disminuir la tasa de transmisión del coronavirus. Si es una persona susceptible, por ejemplo, una persona con enfermedades crónicas o de una edad avanzada, el uso del tapabocas también va a proteger de contraer la infección, sobre todo cuando vamos a lugares concurridos, en el grocery store, uh, cuando tenemos que salir de nuestras casas a nuestro trabajo. Entonces, el uso del tapabocas es una medida de sobrevía, previene la diseminación de la infección en la persona que está enferma, en la persona que está mínimamente sintomática o en la que no se ha dado cuenta que está enferma y protege a las personas vulnerables de adquirir la infección por el coronavirus. El uso del tapabocas más el lavado de manos, eh, cuidadoso, consistente y mantener el distanciamiento social eh, son las tres medidas claves para nuestra comunidad para que sigan uh, manteniendo eh, eh, estas medidas eh, en una manera pues, eficiente que disminuya la transmisión del coronavirus. Thank you, Dr. Gómez. Dr. Mateo, can you talk about the growing concern uh, with the numbers of cases that are increasing in the state of Utah and share your thoughts about that? Sí. Um... La, el número de casos en el estado de Utah ha aumentado drásticamente en las últimas semanas. Esto ha sido a causa de varios eventos, eh, algunos eh, días eh, festivos, también eh, a, brotes de infecciones en, en lugares específicos, pero más que todo en los últimos días, semanas, hemos visto un incremento de casos a a lo, en todo el estado de Utah, no, no específicamente involucrando estos brotes, sino que se siente que hay una, eh, un incremento en la transmisión comunitaria eh, real. El número de pruebas eh, que se realizan para COVID han estado estables, lo cual quiere decir que el, el número de casos incrementados no es debido a un eh, incremento en las pruebas que se hacen de COVID, sino es un incremento real de número de casos. Algo te, que también es alarmante es que el, el número de contactos de cada una de estas personas infectadas ha incrementado de 5, que era antes, a 20 por eh, persona infectada. Y esto eh, puede eh, drásticamente aumentar los casos de manera exponencial. En nuestra comunidad latina, eh, se ha, eh, nuestra en comunidad latina, los hablantes hispanos eh, han sido afectados desde el principio de la epidemia aquí en Utah y lo siguen estando. Entonces es muy, muy importante que, que nuestros hablantes hispanos eh, también um, se unan a, esta, a este llamado de usar mascarilla y de implementar las medidas necesarias, el lavado de manos, como el doctor Gómez lo mencionó, y el distanciamiento físico. Uh, es muy importante quedarse en casa cuando tenemos inclusive síntomas bien leves, eh, quedarse en casa, distanciarse de los demás y también estando en casa, 
tomar las medidas necesarias para evitar el contagio a las otras personas que viven en nuestro mismo hogar. Y esto incluye separarnos lo más posible de nuestras otras personas en el hogar, eh, limpiar las superficies de contacto frecuente como las manecillas de puertas, en las áreas del baño, cocina y aislar a la persona infectada lo más posible. Abrir las ventanas, eh, aumentar la circulación de aire alrededor de nuestra casa. Eh, y cuando salimos de casa, eh, la, la, usar la mascarilla como lo estamos hablando ahora en todo momento, en todo lugar y mantener la distancia física y el lavado de manos. Thank you, Dr. Mateo. Dr. Gomez, what would you tell people who say wearing a mask is not going to make a difference? If I don't wear a mask, that's just fine. What, what response or what advice would you have for people who say that? Para esas personas que tienen esa percepción que un solo caso, una sola persona no va a hacer la diferencia, es importante recalcarle que una sola persona que lleve el coronavirus la puede transmitir eficientemente de una manera muy rápida a cuatro o cinco personas si se mantiene la interacción social regular que llevábamos en nuestras vidas. Entonces sí va a ser la diferencia, sí es vital uh, porque entre menos exposición, entre menos eh, diseminación de la infección, más recursos vamos a tener para nuestro sistema de salud de conservar esa capacidad, eh, digamos, capacidad hospitalaria, capacidad de cuidados intensivos y no colapsar el sistema de salud. Entonces, es una responsabilidad individual de cada miembro de nuestra comunidad latina eh, pensar y adquirir ese concepto de que sí es una responsabilidad individual, de que es por mí mismo, pero también es por los trabajadores de, que comparten un espacio de trabajo contigo por los pacientes vulnerables que pueden vivir en, en nuestras casas, por los trabajadores de la salud que tienen que exponerse todos los días a personas o pacientes con COVID y cada uno de los miembros de nuestra comunidad. Yo le, el mensaje que le mandaría a mm, la comunidad latina en nuestra ciudad y nuestro estado es que seamos, que adquire, adquiramos esa, pobla, esa responsabil, responsabilidad individual de que mi comportamiento sí está afectando a mi comunidad, afecta a mi persona como tal, mi casa, mis amigos, las personas con las que trabajo y la comunidad. Entonces, eh, es una invitación para que cambien el chip, para que cambien esa percepción y, y si todos juntamos nuestras decisiones individuales, podemos hacer la diferencia en la tasa de transmisión del de coronavirus. Thank you. Dr. Mateo, uh, what, is, what is unique as we learn more about this COVID virus? What are the things we're learning about it in, from an infectious disease perspective? Eh, buena pregunta. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuáles son las cosas... Eh, características del COVID eh, que hemos aprendido, bueno, sabemos que se transmite eficientemente, por lo cual recalcamos que, que el ser responsables ciudadanos es muy, muy importante para evitar la transmisión a otras personas. Sabemos que puede causar enfermedad eh, leve hasta muy severa, grave. Sabemos que puede causar eh, en, enfermedad con síntomas muy, muy leves o incluso personas eh, asintomáticas que pueden transmitir la enfermedad. Eso es algo muy importante de reconocer y por lo cual también es importante que inclusive personas que no tienen ningún síntoma usen la mascarilla eh, para evitar el contagio a otras personas. Eh, sabemos que... Eh, hay personas que están en mayor riesgo de desarrollar una enfermedad muy severa y estas son personas de, de edad avanzada, personas con enfermedades crónicas del pulmón, personas que, eh, que fuman, presión alta, eh, entre otras enfermedades crónicas. Eh, y es muy importante que estas personas con estas enfermedades crónicas estén muy alertas y, 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 y practiquen todas estas medidas para mantenerse sanos en la casa. Y sabemos que, eh, que esta enfermedad uh, está 
eh, sobrecargando nuestros sistemas de salud y es importante reconocer esto porque no solo va, si los casos siguen aumentando, no solo vamos a, a sobrecargar el hospital con, con pacientes con COVID, pero también limitamos el espacio para atender a pacientes con otras enfermedades que también necesitan el cuidado. Todas estas otras personas siguen necesitando los cuidados como siempre lo han necesitado. Y estas son una de las, de las cosas que conocemos sobre el COVID, por lo cual es importante tratar de disminuir el contagio lo más que se pueda usando estas medidas que son bien básicas y bien simples como distanciamiento, lavado de manos y uso de la mascarilla en todos los momentos. Ok, last question, least, unless we receive any other questions from uh, the media, but Dr. Gomez and both Dr. Mateo, um, what is your hope with this new campaign that all of the health systems in Utah have come together to join together and join forces to raise awareness? Dr. Gomez, what's your hope for uh, hashtag Mask Up Utah? Lo que esperamos de pues, esta campaña tan intensa a nuestra comunidad latina es que genere conciencia, conciencia en cada uno de eh, las personas que están involucradas en, en la vida eh, regular, ¿cierto? De la vida uh, de nuestra comunidad hispana. Generar conciencia va a hacer que hagamos cambios individuales que van a ser importantes en el comportamiento y en la tendencia de este coronavirus en las semanas que van a venir. Creo que eh, dándole ese poder a las personas individuales de decidir que usando el tapabocas, usando la mascarilla, se protege a sí mismo, se protege a su familia eh, y podemos más o menos llevar una vida normal en la cual participemos de la economía, volvamos a nuestros trabajos, eh, es la esperanza que tengo, que individualmente veamos ese cambio, veamos ese cambio eh, personal, ese cambio cultural, que pensemos más en la responsabilidad comunitaria que tenemos como miembros de la sociedad y que podemos volver a tener una vida más o menos llevadera en el sentido de reactivar la economía, de volver a nuestro sitio de trabajo, si efectuamos estos cambios que estamos proponiendo. Los cambios son llevar la mascarilla, llevar el tapabosca, el tapabocas cuando salimos de nuestras casas y mantener el distanciamiento social y lavarnos las manos uh, regularmente. Creo que practicando esas tres medidas podemos cambiar, corregir el curso de las tendencias de, las, de la infección que está pasando, tendencias que no son sostenibles en el tiempo, tendencias que pueden sobrecargar el sistema de salud que puede restringir el acceso al sistema de salud a nuestra comunidad latina. Y es importante que abramos los ojos y tengamos la perspectiva en el tiempo futuro de que está todavía en nuestras manos, en nuestra capacidad de corregir el curso que llevamos actualmente. Dr. Mateo. Comparto los mismos eh, pensamientos que el doctor Gómez. Uh, lo más importante es que como... Como se dijo, cambiemos ese chip, que entendamos que no se trata de nuestros líderes eh, de salud, que no se trata del gobierno de, de controlar esta, eh, esta situación. Se trata de nosotros como ciudadanos cambiar y hacer nuestra parte y colectivamente vamos a lograr hacer un cambio. Pero tenemos que hacerlo todos juntos, tenemos que colaborar todos, tenemos que sentir ese sentido, tenemos que tener ese sentido comunitario, es, está en la población cambiar eh, es la única forma en la que esto lo vamos a controlar y por eso esta campaña es muy muy importante y, y espero que, que este mensaje llegue muy lejos, especialmente en nuestra comunidad latina y, y otras comunidades que han sido afectadas para hacer ese cambio, usar las medidas que son, que son fáciles de implementar y corregir el curso de esta pandemia Thank you, Dr. Michelle Mateo from Intermountain Healthcare and Dr. Carlos Gomez from University of Utah Health. We appreciate the media being with us today and this now concludes today's press conference. Thank you so much.